On The Real Journey show, you can expect to hear about a real journey. The listeners will be reminded that life experiences have a compelling way of connecting us, inspiring us, and empowering us to stay real. Hey friends, welcome back to The Real Journey show. I'm back. (laughs) I'm super excited to start back up the series of shows. They will be available anywhere that you listen to podcasts at The Real Journey Show. Also, you'll find a video clip of each show on Real with Tara Mart on YouTube. So let's dive in. This this episode is episode 29, and we're going to be talking about, hi, I'm T, and I have ADD. Just a little bit about my journey with attention deficit disorder and how it has recently been eye-opening to me to see how I perform on and off medication. So back it up a little bit. I've been taking ADD medication for quite some time and forgot just how wonderful it helps me to perform at life. And recently I had 10 days ago, I had a robotic hysterectomy. If you followed me on Instagram or Facebook, you've probably seen a little bit about that journey. But before the surgery, they told me that I had to stop taking the medication that I'm on, which is by the way, is a micro dose of medication, but it makes a huge difference in my life. And that's what I want to share with you. But I had to stop taking the medication two weeks prior to the surgery because it affects your pain receptors. We all know nobody wants to feel all the things that are happening during a hysterectomy for sure. So I stopped, I knew stopping the medication was going to be challenging, but I just didn't know like exactly how challenging. And so prior to stopping, the medication. I knew a couple of weeks before the two weeks that I had to, and I started making a plan. Like, how am I going to be productive, get my work done, stay focused? Because ADD, yes, comes with so much stigma as in, I mean, all the things people think about inattentiveness, forgetfulness, um, impulsive, reckless, all the things, right? Um, I know that those are actually, a lot of them are kind of true in certain ways. And I also knew that without the medication, I would be way less focused. I knew that going in. So I started to develop a plan with my therapist. We talked a little bit about setting a very rigorous, strict schedule. Like I couldn't just create Normally, I just create a big to-do list that's supposed to take all week to get done, and then I break it in by break it up by day, and then each day I prioritize my day by need, so or by something I want to do first, second, third, last, until I get all the things that is written on my to-do list done by the end of the week. So that's how I normally function. With AD, without ADD meds, I knew that it would be much more challenging to do that. I it would be a a big list would be overwhelming. I remember that it never worked for me before. So we started making a plan. And what we did is we made a very specific two hour, like broke my day into two hour chunks and put little things that I needed to do every two hours to get them done. Then we also came up with like an alarm system, making sure that I ate certain times, did all the things I was supposed to do by a certain time. Um, You should see the alarms that are set on my phone right now. So when the two weeks came, when it was time to stop the medication for two weeks, the first couple of days were a little shaky, but by the third day, y'all, my life became a chaotic mess. I I have literally forgotten how difficult it is to focus and to stay on task. But more than that, one one of the beautiful things and also the energy sucking things that happens to me without medication was my mind became this prolific generator of a billion ideas. While that's a great 
great thing to have. It's really challenging when everything seems like a priority. It's all exciting. It's all great. And it happens all day and all night. So what happened, I think my therapist and I have talked about this. I think with a creative mind, it's great when it is working for your good, but man, when it becomes working against you, either it goes dark or it's creating too fast and you can't, you can't act on any of it. It becomes very overwhelming. And that's what was happening. I realized real quick, wow, my head, it's not even like, it's not even like a full colored movie. It's more, more like a series of a billion movie trailers <laughs> that just keep happening all the time and nothing's ever completed. And so what my therapist and I talked about to benefit from all those ideas that were coming during those two weeks was to write them down, like write them down, jot them down and a note on my phone and just make a big long list. Because for me, I knew I was going to be going back on medication after the surgery and maybe I could act on some of those when I had more focus, I had more, um, uh, ability to be productive and to think through all the different phases of that production to create this thing or one of the things. And it was such a, it was a fun, a fun plan. It definitely worked. I have this massive long list that I've been throwing out at my team every time we have team meeting. Oh my goodness, we need to try this. And I wrote this on my list. So that was a beautiful piece of being off medication, but it comes with a price, right? One, I couldn't create, couldn't act on any of the things because I didn't have enough focus or stamina to do so. A second thing is all those ideas took my energy away from being actually productive with the things I needed to get done because my alarms would go off, my timer would go off, I would look at my schedule that I created and I hadn't created, I hadn't done a single thing. And sometimes it was just like sending an email. I'm like, why did I send an email? Like, what is wrong with me? And I started to realize how many of the students or adults that I've served in my life have dealt with potentially similar symptoms. Maybe they didn't have ADD diagnosed. Um, by the way, I'm not sure why I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD because I feel like I'm really hyper, but I'm not. So I don't claim it. Um, but the inattentiveness, the impulsiveness, all of that came back in full force through those two weeks. Another thing that came back that really disturbed me and now I realize, you know, now that I'm one week of having medication, I, during that time of no medication, I noticed that I was emotionally unstable. And I mean, not completely, but didn't control my emotions as well. Impulsive with my emotions, if you will. And there were a lot of things people would say, and I would take them so personal. I was like, whoa, you know, like, why are they saying that to me? Or I can't believe this. And things that I would normally dismiss and never even care about. I was just overthinking those things, not doing my work, not doing the work I needed to do, but overthinking things that people were saying. And I found myself just spiraling, if you will, in certain conversations that meant probably nothing. And now I realize how stupid it was, but I didn't understand it then. And, and honestly, that's the thing that I'm hoping to share the story for anybody who's listening. I'm hoping that people will hear it and develop a new level of empathy for people's minds who are different. I, I hate that this is called a disorder because I feel like it's just a different way of thinking. It's a whole nother way of thinking. It's not completely bad. It just needs a little reining in. 
And the best part is that in life, we have this opportunity to be able to use these tools that are provided for us. And I really do think my medication is a tool. It's not, it's not embarrassing. I used to think being medicated is so embarrassing. Like, why can't I just, I'm a healthy girl. Like, why do I have to take this four milligrams of Lamera? Like why? So dumb. But now I'm like grateful that there's something out there that can help me to be have this improved focus and attention, be better organized, be a great time manager, be everything I need to be for the people that I serve, increase my productivity, improve the relationships that I build with the authors that I serve or the people that the athletes that I serve at CrossFit or anywhere that I go. But not only that, by being medicated, my self-esteem, my confidence is so much better. I'm not spending energy in places it doesn't need to be spent. I'm not creating thousands of movie trailers and keeping my mind so occupied that I can't even sleep. I'm getting a decent night of sleep. I'm waking up each morning. I still have a lot of great ideas, but I'm able to complete them. I don't create them in quite the capacity that I do without medication, but I'm still able to create and think creatively and overall just be a better human and have a better quality of life because of the treatment. And I remember so much not wanting to be treated, just like, why can't I just learn coping strategies to deal with this? But when I do the coping strategies, which I had during that two weeks and five days after surgery too, I spent a lot of energy, a lot. It's very draining to do that and to try to focus so heavily on the coping skills where now I don't have to focus on that. It just comes naturally. And so that energy is conserved and I'm able to use it in places that I would much more rather use it. I mean, right now I can't work out, but if I could, I would be working out. Right now I'm walking my dog, (laughs) which is fine. I actually get a lot of walks right now, but there's so many other areas, being a better mom, enjoying your time with your family, increase like learning a new hobby, all the different things. So all of that is just to say that. I'm T and I have ADD and I'm proud of the way that we have learned to manage my beautiful creative mind and make it just a more productive place for me, for the people around me, for the work and the people that I serve in my work world. And I hope that if there are students under your care, there are learners, there are adults that you serve that you're able to be around, that you also can see how this could be for them. Like it's just a different way of thinking and it is it is pretty hard and it is interesting. And while it is a superpower of sorts, um, reining it in a little bit and finding a medication that could work or a treatment that will work to help them have a better quality of life could make all the difference. And I will say that part was not easy. We tried a lot of different medications. Some of them would make me completely lethargic and just lose my personality and not be fun at all. And then some of them would increase my heart rate so much that I couldn't work out or I was going to have a mild heart attack. So finding a, a medication that worked well for me that could treat the symptoms and make me perform better was hard, but it was so worth it. So I hope this helped it in some capacity. Um, And I will be sharing more about my real journey along the way on the Real Journey Show. Let me know your thoughts. You can use the hashtag, hashtag Real Journey Show, or you can always email me, DM me. I'm just a text away, if you will, on Twitter, I'm at Tara Martin EDU, on Instagram, Tara M Martin dot real, and on Facebook, Tara M Martin. Have a great one. See you next time.